Okay, this is going to be a short tutorial <clears throat> to cover how you would take your Revit plan or AutoCAD plan into Illustrator. And you want to do so as a vector graphics and not as a raster. Okay, one key important thing that you need to do, if the plan's not on a sheet, you still have to export this to the correct scale. So meaning, if you go to Control P for Control Print, Okay, so you need to open up your PDF printer and Adobe PDF or Qt PDF. I'm going to use Adobe PDF. Okay, so all you need to do here is that you need to use the correct size sheet, so A1. So what I'm going to do is make sure this is all set. Remember Zoom 100, press OK. Here I'm just going to preview and let's see how this fits. Yes, I know this is an A1 sheet, but if I zoom in, what I want to see is the correct line weight scales okay so that's so important you can maybe make make this fit on an a3 portrait maybe let's see if that'll work better but you have to print to the correct scale and it has to fit on a certain media size okay here make sure vector if there are images inserted in here it won't it will default to roster it's not a train smash um the only thing that you need to consider here is that if it's raster, you, this is critical. So here I'm going to change my page size. Let's make, let's change this to in session. It just means that it, it does. It's not going to save a setting, but let's make this an A3 maybe. A3 portrait. Press OK. Uh, I'm going to say no for now. It'll keep those settings in preview. I just want to see if this will actually fit. Okay. So this will fit on an A3 scale, one to one hundred. Okay, and you see my line weights are working fine here. If I keep zooming in and out, that's fine. I'm going to print this and save this on my desktop very quickly. Press OK. I'm going to save this on my desktop. AutoCAD, you're doing the same thing, and I can show you that in AutoCAD as well very quickly. Okay. All right, it's just opening up the PDF. Okay, so now this is the PDF that it's downloaded. And I use a DPI of 1 to 300, uh, 300 DPI. But you can see this has come out quite neatly on an A3. So the first test is to make sure that it looks good on your A3 PDF. Okay, now that we've achieved that. Now in Illustrator, for those of you that are using Illustrator, all that you need to do is set up a new document, File, New. If it's A1, just make sure that you use A1, which it is. You can go and get custom sizes here, but you can see I've, I set mine up to A1. This is a, a much older version of Illustrator. Now, when you insert these images, so if I go File, Place, and I find the file on my desktop, okay, um, SDP, Place, okay, Media. You want to um, crop to media, just means that it'll bring it on as an A3. Okay. Now, when I pull this into Illustrator, this is on an A1 sheet if I zoom in. And what's interesting is I didn't have to zoom. Because I've printed it to the correct scale, if I put this on my A1 sheet, that's to scale, technically. Okay. Now, if I zoom in and out, sorry. Um, if I zoom in and out, you see it's maintained those. So now you can put your color in the background. Now you can use your fills. And you can use all of these tools that you use in Illustrator. Let me explain what's going on in Photoshop. Now in Photoshop, there's a slightly work, a different process that you need to do before you bring it into Illustrator. So think of it this way. Illustrator is where you set up your artboards. So you're going to draw um, a border around. You're going to set up grids around your sheet. Okay. So here you've got a whole lot of artboard tools where you can set up grids and all of those, but it works It works just like um, Inkscape, for example. So let's just go to view. I want to see my rulers. That's important. Show rulers, because now I can use my guides. Okay. These guidelines, if you, you can set up your guidelines where they're located, just remember here, 10 mil guideline, set up your sheet. Then you can draw your and use your fills. So here you've got all of these tools that you can use your brushes, swatches, different lines. Okay, fill and stroke. You've got all of these tools that you can use now. Okay. Okay. 
So you've got all those different tools that you can use. You must just think of this. This is not, uh, Photoshop's a bit different. Photoshop, you want to edit this image. Okay, so this is Illustrator. So here's your sheet setup. Move this one at the end here. Just remember. So that'll be 831 if it's 10 mil. Okay. Okay, you set up your, here you can put in all your font. And you can also set these to different sizes. That's totally up to you. 18, 20. Okay. So here you, this is where you go and set up your sheet. Okay. Um, okay, that's good. This is where you're going to set up your sheet in other words. But you can see that these work fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these are not. Um, just remember, sometimes you need to embed these because currently it's a link so you'll need to invent this if you go to edit original you can go and edit the original but because it's a pdf i don't have to do much so if i zoom in here it will maintain the quality if it's an image sometimes you'll have to go and set quality settings but you can see this is coming very crisp okay and it's to the correct scale it understands what an a3 sheet is and you can crop it now so once it's in you can then use the mask tool and you can edit the mask. So the mask is just gonna hide this irrelevant stuff so you can get it quite tight. Just remember this is quite neat about it. Now, okay, so it's got a mask, so you can mask additional stuff that you don't wanna see. Okay, just remember that. Okay. You can image trace, but you can actually embed this and it becomes part of this. And if it's vector, it'll make all of these objects part of the vector graphics. Okay, so that's, if you want to embed that, that's an option. Just remember, this is using, this is technically a link file. So if you delete that link file, this might disappear. So just put this in a location. Okay, but you can just simply select this object and you can embed it. So it's, it's grabbing the mask and it will just select the object itself. Okay, um, I just want the mask itself, embed. Now, if I use embed, it becomes an embedded graphics. Okay, it just means now that all of the stuff is now part of my, so all the vector stuff will, now you can see this will work like vector graphics. Okay, meaning a path tool. Okay, now you can see these things get broken up. Okay, all right, just remember that you might have to go and look at your layers and in your layers here you can go and, so in these objects you can go and grab all these sub objects and you can see this is a series of sub objects now. You can go and grab each one of these things, change them individually. Okay. So now these are all, that's a, that's a mask, that's a mask. So by doing that, just remember that we'll also sometimes make this work. But if you move it around, it might cause a delay because you're now embedding this graphics. Okay. So keep it as a link. Depends what you want to do. But so you can see on an A1, this has worked perfectly. Okay. Right, so that's the first, that's the first one. Okay, let's close Illustrator. No. Now in Photoshop. Okay, as I said, this is an older version, but the same principle, principles apply. Okay. I'm just waiting for Photoshop to open. Okay. Now in Photoshop, what you need to do is you need to go File, Open. This is slightly different. Now, if you're making this an A1, I would export the A1. But this is the this is the most important concept to understand. When you're opening a a PDF, you open the PDF. You say Open. This is critical. It depends on the version that you use, but you need to tell it. It mustn't use bounding box, it must use media box. Now you can see it's identified the correct um, media size. And if you're going to print this out and use this for screen graphics, I would stick to 300 or you can go up to 600. But it's picked up the settings already. You don't have to do any more. If I press open now, and because this is a vector graphics, that other stuff in the background will disappear. But what you need to understand, this is an A3. If I put a background, you'll see what I mean. It's going to look quite crisp. So I'm just going to create a new layer and move this layer to the back, switch this off. And then this layer, I'm simply going to dump a white background. OK, 
Okay, if I switch this back on. Now you can't see, this is an A3, and you can see it's crisp, okay? Yes, just remember, if you keep zooming in, you are going to see the resolution. But just remember, this is a high resolution count, so it keeps zooming at, technically looking at an A3. But what this allows me to do now is it allows me to fill in these areas. So let's just use a different color, for example. Okay, on this layer or new layer, let's create a new layer. So I can now fill in areas. I'm just using a new layer. Let's change some change this color. Now I can simply just drop in color in the background. Okay. Yes, you just need to go through and fine tune some of these things. He has a bit of a gray line in between. But on that scale, it's perfect. Okay. When you're done with this, you can either save this as save as JPEG. Okay, and then pull this into Illustrator. Or you can but what I recommend is save this as a JPEG or PNG. So PNG will maintain the background, press save. So I'm going to save this on my desktop and I'll show you the difference once we come in. So here you must just say interlaced, none, and you want to go slow and fast. Okay, press OK. Let's go to my desktop. Let's open up Illustrator quickly. I've got the 64-bit version as well. Okay, let's just see if it's on my desktop. Oh, let me just save it again. I think I've saved in the wrong place. File, save as PNG. I did cut that away. That's on my desktop, yeah. Okay, so let's open up Illustrator. File, new, pick your correct size of sheet, press OK. And I'm going to bring in both. So here I'm going to go File. Um, so just remember, Illustrator, you're actually placing um, these. So let's say PNG has placed this. I'm going to show you the, the difference. You're not going to notice a difference. So this one's got color. Now I'm going to go to File, Place, SDP, Open. OK. Here it's just telling you, where's Media? OK. However, yes, it looks different there, but if I zoom in and I zoom in, you're going to see very difference, very little difference between the two. Only difference will be now, so if you start zooming in, it will pixelate, just because this is a roster. But because I've printed it to a good scale and to the correct scale, okay, you can see these. it looks almost the same. Here, yeah, if I zoom in, this just won't pixelate, just remember, because it's vector. Okay, but you can see, if I printed these two, on a on a document, you wouldn't notice you wouldn't notice a difference. Okay. Okay. Here I've got color. So using Photoshop to put color in. Okay. 